Hello and welcome to another video from Intuit Software. Today I want to look at some unusual shelf configurations for point of sale display units. So you may have seen recently that I've created some images of angled shelves for displaying different types of products and we've had a few questions about how we can how we can uh, make these. So what I want to do is just start Article Designer and I'll just make a product in here, very basic. Let's say that this is two meters high by 500 by 500 and we will add in our top, bottom, left and right. And let's put in a back panel in here as well so that we've got that. Okay, so we've now got our tall carcass and then the next thing that we want to do is add in an angled shelf. Now, the best way to put in an angled shelf is to actually set this to be an adjustable shelf. And we'll just use a linear division in here of one to one to begin with to just bring in a singular shelf in the middle. Now, if I go to the construction principle, I can save a copy of this and I'm just gonna save it with some very basic terminology. I'll just call it angle shelf in here rather than giving it a code and you'll see down here that we've got the rotation around x and y axis so if i come into here you can see that i've got a picture showing me that i can simply just rotate this so if i was to type in the let's say 30 and then click apply that's going to then put the shelf in and it doesn't look like it's rotated but then as soon as I use the new feature construction mode I can turn that off and click my visual level and I'll increase that to a level six and it will then bring in my adjustable shelf showing it at 30 degrees now this is a bit of a problem because this shelf would just clearly fall off here because the uh, shelf pegs are not going to stop it. So what we need to do is make this with an upstand and change the fittings. So the way we would do this is use a multi-part. Um, so if we go back into our angled shelf construction, what we want to do is take off these tolerances here on the left and the right hand side and I might increase my front offset here. Let's say that this should be inset 50 millimeters from the front edge. Uh, I'm going to retain the 30 degree angle but obviously I can set this to be whatever I want and if I wanted to add in more flexibility I can always add in a variable that would allow me to drive this uh, across all of the uh, shelves in all of the products but for now let's just leave this at 30 degrees so we've got in here a connector as a shelf support I'm just going to take this out of here and I'm going to show you a trick on how we can adjust the uh, shelf fittings later on so the next thing to do is to go to our part definition so we've completed all of the constructional elements the next thing that we want to do is go to part definition and if we come into here you'll see that i now just have a singular shelf with a leading edge that's edge banded and i want to change this to be a multi-part so what i'm going to do is come down and save this and i'm going to call this um, angle shelf and let's put a PD in front of there for part definition. And then what I want to also do is call this angle shelf upstand. And I've saved two versions of it. Now what I want to do is copy my edging tape from edge one onto edge three. So I now have two edges in here. And then I want to combine these together in uh, a multi-part. So I'll go back to my angle, original angled shelf and say that this is a multi-part save that and then I can combine these two parts within the multi-part so what I want to do in here is on my multi-part take off my edging because I'm not going to need that and I can take out any surfaces and then in here I want to change my um, shelf manufacturing information for the manufacturing uh, data that's going to get, get passed through to the CNC and the saw I'm going to rename this as uh, well angled shelf or adjustable shelf so let's just put angle shelf and in here I want it in the bill of materials but not to be generated to the saw or to the CNC so I can add in my machining information in here and then if I go to my multi-part editor 
you can see in here I can add in some reference points so if I combine the points in a multi-part I can then say that I want the virtual thickness or the, the you know the perceived thickness to be 50 millimeters and I'll go to my reference points and create some new linear divisions. So in here, I'll use a linear division in X, which is left to right, of zero to one to zero, or my limits on my points. And then in here on the front, I want to do zero to 19 millimeters to one to zero. And that will then double up my points down at the bottom here, or my leading edge. I can then attach the parts. So I'll detach these points and say that my leading edge should go from one, two, three, and four in here. And then what I'm going to do is just change this to be part definition angle shelf, press enter, and then click tick in here. Okay. And then the next thing I want to do is add in my upstand section. So that's easy enough to do as well. What we can do is just detach the points and then click new part that goes from this point to this point and then in here I can rotate it around if I need to or offset it actually what I'll do is change my points that I'm connecting to so I'll say that it should be this point to this point and then in here you can see it's gone blue so this is going to indicate that it's stood up on edge and it'll have a Z value of 50 millimeters so that's going to be my upstand and then this is going to be the up stand So I've got the wrong name in there, I just need to find my name. So if I click on here, oh, I just put up instead of up stand. And then if I click tick, that's gonna bring that part in there. Let's have a look on the preview. So you can see I've now got my little shelf in here of my little up stand to stop my products falling off. Now, of course, I can go to my parts and I can say, well, actually, that needs to be 80 millimeters in here just to kind of stop any bigger products falling or toppling off the front of my shelf. That looks OK. And then what I'll do is click um, OK on this and then save. And then I want to click apply and save and apply. And now you can see in here, I've got my shelf with my upstand ready to go. I can use linear divisions to control the quantity and the position. So I'll say that should be zero to, I don't know, let's say 450 millimeters to one. And then that's gonna put two shelves in with a 450 millimeter gap. Now, if I want multiple 450 millimeter gaps, I can use a linear division of an N fold. So I can say N times 450 millimeters to one, and it will then put in as many 450 millimeter gaps as possible. Okay, so the next thing that I want to do is add some fittings into this. So again, I'm still in Article Designer, so this is a great feature because it allows me to design on the fly and see real-world ind indications of where my fittings are going to be. And if I, just, if I switch into wireframe, you can see I've actually not got any fittings holding any of these adjustable sh uh, shelves up here at all, any of my angled shelves. So that's no good. And then let's go a little bit further and add something fancy in here, maybe some uh, LED display tape for um, shining on our products or something like that. So if we go to our angled adjustable shelf, I'm just going to go back into the construction. I'm going to go back to the part definition. And instead of the multi-part, what I'm going to do is go to the original angle shelf here. And then what I'm going to do is add some fittings, this time to the part definition instead of the construction principle. So this is a little known trick and it allows us to just be a little bit more flexible on where we put our fittings. So for example, if we come to here, edge one, what I can do is actually take that edging tape out of there because I've got my upstand button up to this. And if I open that up, you can see here I've got connection situation. So I can click plus and then I can add in um, cam fittings to hold that downstand or upstand onto the front of that shelf. And then what I want to do is add the same fitting now into edge two and edge four, which is going to be my left and right hand side of that shelf. 
Now, if I want to also add in a little bit more information, what I can do is go back up to my um, multi-part editor and then add in some reference points. So what I'm going to do here is say that I need some reference points which are going to be based off a of linear division. And I'm going to say in X, it should run from, um, now I don't know, let's say, 15 millimeters to 1 to 15 millimeters and in here let's say this should be 1 to 2 from the back so you can see it's going to put my LED shelf um, tape uh, a third of the way up along the depth of my shelf and if I go to my parts I can add in an SPP and in this case I'm going to choose my LED strip and I'm going to add in another one which is going to be the diffuse lens to match that as well. Oh, I need to click my points, of course. Okay, so if I go to my preview now, you can see I've now got my LED strip tape in here as well. And then when I click save on this, and then I want to discard now, you have to be careful here because we don't want to apply it back to the original angled shelf. We'll just click discard and apply that back and when we refresh the build you can see in here we've now got our LED tape and if I go up and click on this in here we want our fittings coming through so where are those oh well also on some fittings in the upstand as well okay so we can see in here that we don't have our adjustable shelf um, sorry our cams in here instead of the adjustable shelf clips and if we run a connection scan on the product so if we select the product and then run a connection scan um, let's do that here with connection you can see in here we've got a cam connection that's been created automatically and when we look at the properties of it it's actually set to an adjustable shelf clip which is why so what I want to do is just go into my preferred cam of choice which is going to be this one and then in here what I can do is copy the connectors into the adjustable shelf clip and paste those in place so it's now going to bring through those fittings I can set that this will work from 18 up to let's say 25 millimeter board and then when I click tick and apply on that it's going to then come through so that I now have my cams. Now if I wanted to, I can obviously go in and put them into this upright piece as well. But for now, I think this looks okay. So that just leaves us now uh, the option to uh, put this into production, take some technical drawings, or if we wanted to, we could also keep going and add in more machining information. So we need to run a, 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 a channel up here to feed this electrical information uh, electrical cables up to these LED strips. So if I select that side part and I just want to add some machining, I can turn 3D machining on and then add in a groove. And the easiest way to do that is to just snap with AutoCAD geometry to my LED tape. And then what I want to do is just bring this all the way down to the bottom here so that it's going to allow me to um, run the wire in and then I need to change the width and depth so I'll go to the properties on this and say that the width of this should be more like 20 millimeters wide and the depth let's do at 16 millimeters deep um, so yeah that might be a little bit too uh, deep let's go 12 something like that and then what I want to do now is add in some holes as well so that I've got access to them so I'll go to hole and I can just again just copy and paste this to where I need it to be. I'll change that property on this to be a through hole, so 19 mil by 20 mil diameter. And then I can just copy this all the way up. So I can say that that should go up to this one. And again, I can just use AutoCAD geometry to precisely snap this to exactly where I need it to be. And if I just copy. I can use any reference point that's going to be repeatable. There we go. That makes it a little easier. And now when I turn 3D editing off, I've now got cable access into the LED tape. 
Okay, so next thing then is to create a presentation document. So if we just come into here, we can go to realistic view, article related variables. Let's choose a nice looking material. So in this case, I'm going to go to basic data materials case and then choose something like a natural oak from Egger. And then turn 3D editing off. So there we go, that looks quite nice now. And then I just need to create my rendered visualization. So I'll go to the output tab, drop this down and choose to create a scene. And then in here, I can just go to presentation and I'll just run a quick test render on this. So I'll just click on the teapot. And you can see if I zoom in here, I'm going to get my LED lights shining in here. I might need to just put one in the top in there just because it's in a bit of shadow. So that's how we can create angled shells using IMOS.